Hello, third grade. Uh, Mr. Kelbert coming to you for your next art project. Um, this next art project is going to be kind of a long one. It'll probably take you like three or four classes to finish. Um, so make sure you really persevere on this. It's not one um, that we're just going to finish in one class. Um, so don't have that expectation coming into it that you'll be done with it today. Um, typically when you are in my art class, I like to focus a lot on art history. So artists throughout um, the past. And one of my favorite things to do is to talk about contemporary artists. You'll be learning a lot about contemporary artists with me this year. And contemporary artists are artists that are actually currently living and making artwork. So they're not these artists that died a long time ago that we talk about a lot. They are artists that are alive right now and are currently making work. Um, and today, the artist that I'm going to introduce you to, his name is Romero Brito. So when we take a look at artists, a lot of times we will... Um, look at some of the artwork and I'll kind of talk about their life and we'll kind of look at their style of art and then we'll make something inspired by them. So his name is Romero Brito. And Romero was born in October 1963 so that makes him 56 years old. And he originally comes from Recife, Brazil and Recife is way down here. It's right on um, the eastern coast of Brazil. Okay, so you'll notice a lot of times in videos with him that we'll see that he has kind of an accent because he's not from here. Um, we would be right about here on the map. Okay, we're from Wisconsin and be right about here. Okay, and now I do believe he lives in New York City, which is kind of like right out here. So a lot of artists end up moving to big cities like New York City um, because that's where um, a lot of people live and buy artwork. So his artwork, we'll notice um, it really looks a lot like pop art. And for those of you who know what pop art is, those are artists that make artwork about things that are popular. So a lot of times we'll see um, popular foods, we'll see popular pictures, we'll see athletes, we'll see celebrities, we'll see rock stars and movie stars, um, typically things that people recognize. And with that, a lot of times they'll use a lot of really bright colors with pop art. Now he takes pop art and combines it with another art style called, called cubism. And these were artists that wanted to show the different sides of something all at the same time. So um, Pablo Picasso is an example of a cubist artist that um, he oftentimes would show like the front of somebody's face while also showing the side of somebody's face at the same time. And they typically did this by using lines to kind of break up their space. And growing up, Romero was actually very poor. Um, Brazil is an area that doesn't have a lot of money. So growing up, he would paint on whatever he could find, whether that was cardboard newspaper, um, old mail, um, pretty much anything he could get his hands on is what he would paint. And he couldn't even afford paintbrushes, so oftentimes he would actually um, just use his fingers to paint, so finger painting. Now when we look at his work, a lot of times we'll see these really bright, vivid colors, and that goes a lot with that pop art that I was talking about. And we'll also see a lot of patterns, how he likes to break up his artwork into all these different sections. You notice these black lines that divide the sections and then he adds patterns so we see stripes polka dots we see kind of this almost like zigzag checkered pattern floral pattern these squiggly lines so lots and lots of patterns in his work and these patterns are divided by these really bold thick black lines that kind of helps break up that space so those colors don't mesh together and this is very similar to how um, cubists used to make their work that I mentioned now Romero is probably one of the most famous contemporary artists right now um, and because of his fame, he's had the opportunity to work for a lot of really big, important events. So he actually did the Super Bowl halftime um, many years ago, and we'll actually watch a video clip of that next time. So he got to help kind of design and coordinate the halftime show. Um, he's done artwork for the World Cup. He's done artwork for the Olympics, which we'll see in just a second. He's done artwork for Disney. If you go to an airport, you'll probably see some of his artwork on luggage. Um, so he's done a lot of artwork for a lot of really cool, important companies and events. So here are some stamps that he actually designed for the Beijing Olympics in 2008. Um, notice his style. We see the bright colors. We see patterns. And this time he applied his style to different events at the Olympics. So we see gymnastics, um, swimming, another gymnastics. This looks like track and field, uh, tennis, and then another track and field. So... Um, very obviously his style. Um, his artwork is something you can look at and when you see it, it's very recognizable. Um, some more examples of his work, these really thick black lines that we talked about, um, black lines dividing up those sections of these portraits. 
and then using patterns to fill those in. Um, here you can see in the hair, he really used the same kind of color scheme. You see these warm colors um, throughout the hair. Notice too, he likes to divide people's faces in half a lot. That's something that we'll be doing too um, in our drawings today. Um, but he does that and oftentimes colors the face two different colors. Um, here's a cat that he did. Very similar to the portrait that we just saw. Um, lots of patterns, lots of thick black lines, um, really bright, vivid colors. You can see his signature down here as well, Romero Rito. And I believe this is our last one. He likes to use a lot of hearts in his work too. Um, maybe towards Valentine's we can take a look at him again and do something inspired by him. Um, a lot of hearts throughout his work. And once again, kind of that same style that we were seeing before. So next we're going to... Um, take a look at a demo video for him and I'm going to introduce you guys to um, something called proportions and proportions is um, how to correctly draw something. So we're going to be doing a self portrait, which is a picture of yourself. And I'm going to teach you guys um, where things belong on your face. So a lot of times people don't realize that, but your eyes are always in the middle of your head. So if I was going to take a ruler and measure from here to the top of my head, it'd be the same as measuring from here to the bottom of my chin. Okay, so that tells me my eyes are smack dab in the middle of my head. And there are a lot of really cool tricks to drawing um, self-portraits in the face that I'm going to talk to you guys about to kind of help us draw the best self-portraits that we can.